A huge part of my childhood involved waking up early in the morning, turning on the TV and day after day watching the epic sagas of Dragon Ball Z. The crazy Kamehameha's, watching Vegeta be a badass over and over again, witnessing Krillin die time after time. Those were the days. Then life happened. I got a job, got married and Dragon Ball Z slowly made its way out of my life. Honestly, I couldn't see myself finding the time to watch the anime again, which is why I was so excited to hear about a brand new Dragon Dragon Ball Z RPG that would retell the events of the series. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot does a lot of things right and in many ways it was the Dragon Ball Z game that I always wanted, but just like Yamcha's battle abilities, some things needed a bit more attention. Actually quite a lot of things. So is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot worth playing? Let's take a look. Kakarot is the entire Dragon Ball Z saga from the initial invasion of Raditz all the way to Buu's demise. If you don't know anything about Dragon Ball Z, essentially the story revolves around a bunch of warriors living on Earth and their constant struggles to protect the planet from invading forces. And the Dragon Balls? They're artifacts that when combined can summon a dragon capable of granting wishes. That's the basic spoiler free plot in a nutshell. If you don't have time to watch all 291 anime episodes, which let's be honest would take a decent amount of commitment, then this is the best way to experience it all. It's also worth mentioning that there is a massive encyclopedia which covers just about everything you could imagine from the characters to the lore and the detail here is really impressive. I personally loved these diagrams which show how all of the characters in the universe are related to each other. If you are a Dragon Ball Z fan, you'll be happy to know that all of the amazing moments from the series are back with brand new cutscenes and they look amazing. I was absolutely pumped to see some of the key moments brought back to life such as when Goku turns Super Saiyan for the first time during the final Frieza fight. One of the best things here is that all of the major original voice actors are back which I felt was essential for a loyal retelling of this epic anime series. M Mr. Satan lost? But, but, but how? I, uh, I just lost my footing. I'm gonna take a break, uh, and then I'm gonna mess him up real good. He still doesn't have the slightest clue what he's dealing with. World champion my ass. While this game is named Kakarot, you don't play as the great Goku through the entire game. Depending on what's happening in the story, you'll also take control of Piccolo, Vegeta, Gohan and some others which is important as just playing with Goku would mean missing many of the key events. These main events I speak of of course involve battles against the invading Saiyans, Frieza, Cell and Buu. But in between these are intermission periods and these can be likened to the filler episodes from the anime series. Navigating the world also feels very Dragon Ball Z like with your characters able to fly around the region at high speeds. We don't exactly have an open world here, instead there are several larger regions that need to be selected before you explore them. There's also of course the planet of Namek which you'll need to travel to when you take on Frieza, however there's only a single area to explore here. These regions have quite a bit for you to discover, mostly in the form of simply collecting ingredients for cooking and other materials to help with your quests. There's also quite a few side quests that pop up at different points in the game and to put it simply, these are a chore. Not only are most of these repetitive hunt or fetch quests, but at times you'll be forced to switch regions several times only for a few lines of dialogue. The issue here is that each time you enter a new region, you're hit with a long loading screen. A recent patch has reduced this loading time, but it's still bloody annoying. I honestly would have avoided all of these side quests if it wasn't for the chance of being able to expand my community board as a reward for the completion, but more on this system later. When it comes to the combat system, I'm really in two minds. On the one hand, it really does feel like it should for a Dragon Ball Z title. There's flying, the pace is fast and there's a mix of energy and physical special attacks. You're also required to manage your key level which can be used for special attacks like Kamehameha. Better yet is that some of the major battles incorporate additional animated sequences into the fight itself which really creates some epic moments. Yep, that's all great, but then there's the other half of my mind, the one that can't help but see the many problems with this combat system. We'll start with the fact that there really isn't much in the way of variety. There's only several different special attacks for each playable character and in a nutshell most of the physical specials and energy specials fundamentally work the exact same. It didn't take long for me to find out what works and employ that strategy for the rest of the game for every boss with every character in every battle. A couple of times but not too often a challenge came my way and I took quite a bit of damage but alas you can just spam your plentiful supply of healing items at no cost whatsoever. Seriously healing to full health is instant and takes all of the strategy away from the tougher fights. 
These tougher fights are usually scenarios that place your character against multiple enemies and I really hated these. At times, beams were flying at me left, right and center and I felt absolutely helpless like I could do nothing at all and just had to hope that one of my attacks would land. Sometimes you have two AI controlled party members with you for support and this helps with the uneven matchups but most of the game you'll be fighting one on one or one on two or one on three. Kakarot also features a couple of mechanics which seems like a good idea but hardly ever pop up. One such mechanic is when you and your opponent fire beam specials at each other which results in a tug of war type event. Cool idea, but I only ever had this happen twice. The same goes for the stun gauge which is clearly shown within every enemy's stat display. The problem here is that it takes far too long to stun the enemy, so long that 99% of the time they either die or refresh their meter before you have a chance to stun them. Hold up guys, I still have a little more complaining to do. Dragon Ball Z is all about power levels and at times I think they did take this a little too far as your strength versus an enemy is massively dependent on your character's level. Too much so. If you're several levels higher, the enemy will do one damage to you every attack but if you're several levels lower, you could be wiped out in an instant. There's very little wiggle room here and this was yet another contributor to being able to employ the exact same strategy for every fight. So to summarize, the combat is very loyal to the franchise but has loads of problems which result in lack of required strategy, difficulty and some wasted mechanics. If you've seen Dragon Ball Z, you'll know that one of the main topics of conversation is getting stronger, especially if you're a Vegeta, but not so much if you're the midget clown Shoutsu. One of the ways that you can increase your stats is through cooking. Each time you cook, you'll get a temporary stat bonus on certain stats such as a 15% increase to your key attacks and also a permanent stat boost such as plus one to your defense. The permanent stat boosts really are insignificant so don't expect to change the tides of battle by stuffing your mouth with excessive amounts of cake. Your characters can also learn or increase the power of their special attacks by spending Z orbs on skill trees but I've got to say this is among the worst skill tree systems that I have ever experienced. For starters, never once did I ever run out of orbs to spend. I was never faced with the decision of what to upgrade and this was disappointing. Not only this, but I was always completely up to date with all of my skills. The only thing holding me back from upgrading them further was story progression. I'll admit, finding the key ingredients in cooking huge meals worked well enough but the ability upgrade system was absolutely pointless. I think that Kakarot's best mechanic is the community board. This system was also the sole reason why I persisted through all of the boring side quests. There are a massive number of characters in the Dragon Ball Z universe and most of these characters have a unique soul emblem that can be collected. Some of these emblems you'll collect through story progression but most of them will require some sort of side quest completion. Each soul emblem has its own statistics that can be leveled up through the use of items. If you place enough emblems on a particular board you'll increase the community skill level which provides loads of different benefits from cooking to research and development to your attack power. The placement of these emblems also requires some strategy as some characters will increase their stats when placed next to a related character. Overall, this works very well and finding, leveling up and strategically placing these soul emblems was one of my favourite things about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. There's a lot to love about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. The fact that we have a complete retelling of the entire series is awesome and the many beautifully animated cutscenes with the original voice actors really helped bring this all to life. This is why all major fans of this series should consider giving Kakarot a shot. But I wouldn't blame you if you skipped this one. While the gameplay did feel like a Dragon Ball Z game should, it had a lot of problems and lacked the depth and variety that I was craving. The boring side quests and extremely simple, poorly designed character upgrade system also held the game back big time. At least they got the community board right though, as collecting the many soul emblems and exploring all of the different combinations was a lot of fun. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is not a bad game, but it's far from great. Still, I'm hoping that the developers listen to the feedback and bring another in the series such as the original Dragon Ball. What did you think of Kakarot? Do you agree with what I said? Let me know in the comments. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. I'm currently finishing up with Xenosaga episode 2 so stay tuned for a review coming soon. Also if you like this hit like and sub for more RPG content, it helps me out a lot. See you next time.